How's it going, everybody? My name is Nate, and welcome back to Culture Coliseum. Uh, today, we're going to talk about one of my favorite books of all time, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams, and how it relates to the absurdist movement. Uh, before we get started, don't forget to like the video and be sure to share it with anyone you think is interested. And if you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. Now, I want to start by talking about where the absurdist movement comes from in the first place. So the notion of absurdism kind of springs as this strange philosophical offshoot of nihilism and existentialism, where nihilism believes that the universe is chaotic and has no meaning, and existentialism believes uh, the universe is imbued with whatever meaning you decide to give it. Absurdism kind of marries these two in the universe has no meaning, but that should make you happy. You should be content with the fact <laughs> that the universe has no meaning. And this is really uh, best expressed in uh, Albert Camus' book, uh, The Myth of Sisyphus in which he famously states that one must imagine Sisyphus happy. Sisyphus being the ancient Greek king who was sentenced to forever roll a boulder up a mountain by the gods, and when he reached the top, it would roll back to the bottom and he'd have to start the whole thing again. But Camus' sort of thesis is that one needs to be happy in knowing that everything is futile and that nothing really matters. And on that note, let's talk about The Hitchhiker's Guide, <laughs> because this book takes such joy in the fact that nothing means anything, <laughs> and it takes the opportunity to just trash everyone in the most delightful way possible. Uh, so this book, we start with, uh, well, the first thing we start out with is the introduction, which notes how Earth is uh, a planet in the unfashionable backwater area of the Milky Way galaxy, or a blue speck that no one cares about, which is, you know, that's Nile. Nothing matters. <laughs> but the book never... The book never wants you to despair. It It's not like... Oh, look at this. Why does anyone care? It's, look, let's go have a good time. <laughs> uh, because th this book just never stops making jokes. And it's, it's sort of Adam's thesis is that nothing matters, so let's just have fun with it. Um, our main character is Arthur Dent. He is your extremely stereotypically average uh, English citizen. He wakes up to his house about to be destroyed by a construction crew, uh, but little do they know that the entire Earth is about to be destroyed by a larger construction crew uh, that's building a space highway. <laughs> uh, uh, we then meet Ford Prefect, who is named after the car, the Ford Prefect, because when he came to Earth, he was under the impression that cars were the uh, dominant form of life on the planet. Uh, and uh, this is sort of reflected in the movie, and I know a lot of people don't like the movie, but there are a few moments that I think really sort of shine through in the film from the book, uh, there's a scene that introduces Ford where he's trying to shake hands with a car and he almost gets hit and that's how he meets Arthur because Arthur tackles him out of the way. That's a very sort of cute moment. Um, when the Earth is destroyed by the Vogon constructor fleet, um, the Earth doesn't explode. It just goes, whoop, and it's gone. That's it. There's no fanfare. It's just gone. Um, there's an extended conversation in this book about 
how the plans for this space highway have been in the uh, the local planning office for months, but they've been like in the the boiler room in the sub basements. So nobody cares because <laughs> no one cares enough to look. Um, but yeah, this this book also makes reference to uh, absurdism in other ways and just the meaninglessness of everything, the infinite and probability drive. Uh, that powers the ship Heart of Gold. It it just doesn't. It, it shows that just nothing matters because it just generates random things. Uh, there's the instance where, uh, so once Ford and uh, Arthur are have been jettisoned out of the Vogon ship because the Vogons do not like them. Uh, they in fact want them to die. Uh, they are saved literally at the last second because the Heart of Gold randomly decided to warp to their location and pick them up. And then they are trapped in the um, the Infinite Monkey Theorem, where if you give a monkey, or enough monkeys, enough typewriters, one of them will eventually produce Hamlet, or uh, one of Shakespeare's works, which is another sort of philosophical jab which is very funny. Um, my favorite example of absurdism in this entire book is the fact that um, uh, when they are pursued by missiles uh, over the planet Magrathea, uh, when they're about to be blown up, they hit the probability button, and the uh, the missiles are transformed into a bowl of petunias and a sperm whale that then plummets to Earth, or not to Earth, but to the ground. And Adams goes into excruciating detail about the very, very short life of this poor creature, where as it plummets to the ground, it begins, you know, it's like watching humanity be born. It's naming things. And then it finally comes to, what's that big round thing underneath me that's getting closer? I think I'll call it ground. Uh, and it goes, maybe it'll be my friend, and then it dies. <laughs> it's This book is just so delightful in the way it tells you that nothing matters. And really, the central thesis is printed right on the Hitchhiker's Guide that Ford gives to Arthur. In big red friendly letters, on the front cover is printed the best advice anyone could give anyone. Don't panic. <laughs> You've just been told that nothing in your life matters. You are not alone in the universe. And in fact, there's an entire alien society that you had no idea about. Don't panic. <laughs> and that's really the key here, is Adam's sort of reframing the idea of absurdism from nothing matters and you need to be happy with it to, yeah, nothing matters. But try not to panic. Just do whatever you have to do to move on with your life. Um, and, you know, in some cases, just have fun with it. And that's really the theme throughout all of these books. Uh, in the second book, uh, they go to the restaurant at the end of the universe, which, from the title, you would think it's far off down that way. No, you are literally watching the end of the universe as you eat dinner. They, they time travel you out there and you eat dinner as you watch the heat death of the universe. Uh, in the third book, uh, at the end of the second book into the third, there's an entire like three page uh, just tangent about how Ford or Arthur was playing Scrabble and they threw the letter Q into a privet bush and that sort of spiraled out of control and killed one of their girlfriends while they were trapped in the past. It's bizarre. The planet Earth isn't populated by Neanderthals. It's populated by a ship full of aliens that were telephone sanitizers and beauticians and people who had no practical skills. That's what Adams is trying to just viciously mock in this book is just everything because in reality no one knows what they're talking about 
no one really knows the answer to everything. So what is the answer to life, the universe, and everything? 42. <laughs> you know, it's really just a wonderful sort of, it's sort of a way to reframe how you look at the world. And it's just such a fun series of books. And in the way it reframes absurdism and uses it to just mock everyone, it's so delightful. I would highly recommend that if you haven't at least read the first one, please do. And if you want to read all five, go ahead. <laughs> I cannot encourage you enough to read these books. These are delightful sort of doors into modern philosophy uh, with absurdism and existentialism. And it's just, it's just hilarious. <laughs> these books are so funny. Um, uh, but on that note, I'll let you all get reading. <laughs> Uh, comment down below if you intend to try reading them, and if you do, let us know what you thought. My name is Nate, and I'll see you in the next one.